Hello, Silver Grayscale here, getting back some more Shovel Knight, Shovel of Hope. It is time for us to tackle our final Order of No Quarter Knight, which is Tinker Knight, who is hiding out in the Clockwork Tower. So let's not waste any time and let's jump right in. So, this level has a lot of shades of Metal Man from Mega Man 2. With the conveyor belts and all that. And if you heard that, that was just a... Um, poster I have that I'm going to have to put up later. Again. So, as I was saying... There's a lot of uh, shades of Metal Man in the Clockwork Tower. But because the Clockwork Tower also contains the words Clock Tower, or rather the word Clock Tower, uh, you can bet that we're gonna have some uh, callbacks to all of the Clock Tower levels in Castlevania. So that's gonna be fun. So yeah, if you want to, you can easily just um, achieve the uh, shovel drops from that thing. And I do want to fish here first before doing anything else. Uh, of course, of course, it's a bloody icor. Huh. <sighs> All right, I of fortune. So we're gonna be climbing up here. There we go, and let's see if we can make our exit out of this room be equally as stylish. Yes, we could. And then we go this way. God damn it. So we need to get there, but to get there we need to go around. If we can smack. All right. I must be uh, mistaken. This room for the iteration in one of the other campaigns because there was not a, any treasure there or any secrets. I'm just gonna refill because I don't trust myself. See what I mean? I don't trust myself. So these guys will fire out cog wheels, either above them that then loop um, under them that they jump, or shooting in front of them that then loops uh, over them, as you can see there. So yeah. Say hi to the uh, Medusa analog for this place. These are rocket powered sword blades. And yes, they will go in a wavy pattern, and yes, they are worth absolutely nothing. They just exist here to be an annoying enemy over spiked floor. So. If we carefully platform our way over here, we can get our final relic. 
the mobile gear. Right over hazards and reach higher places. So just activate it, hop on. And it will make a little jump when it reaches the um, edge of a platform. And yes, it protects against spiked floors. There we go, dealt with you. At times I'm just glancing over to that poster that almost fell. So I'll be putting that up between videos again. Alright, be very, very careful. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have the face locket. Up! <clears throat> just like Medusa heads, they just exist to be a pain in the fucking ass. Classic NES game, just the mm. all right. As I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by bad level design. Uh, like you can't have both a like Castlevania analog. And, like, Metal Man stage, like, they don't work together. Like, you have one section where you're trying to platform, and then you have one section... Why did I jump? Why the fuck did I even jump there? Uh... I swear to god, I'm gonna need my boyfriend after this. Yep! I mean, these will be easier to collect than up in the fucking ceiling spikes. <sighs> I hate this level. Alright. <sighs> there we go. Like, see what I mean? Where you can't have, like, basically Medusa heads running around on Metal Man's conveyor belts. Like, Like, goddammit, the reason that the Medusa heads even existed was one, so that it fit, like, you know, the horror aesthetic of Castlevania, but also so it fit, so it acted as a way to, like, punish players who jump, like, who, like, basically forced players to learn how, um, Simon's jump, uh, like, how his jump arc worked. And like, you you can change, you have free reign of Shovel Knight in the air, like... It doesn't work the same way in this game. And that's one thing that really, really hurts, because... I don't, I don't know what happened, because like the first levels are really, really fun and interesting, and they work well with, you know, Shovel Knight's controls, and then um, Area 2 rolls around, still the same thing, you know, ramping up the difficulty, and here it's just like, let's emulate Mega Man and Castlevania, because we, and, you know, and freaking Ninja Gaiden at some extent. 
because we are running out of our own ideas. <laughs> like... I... Like, there is definitely a market for, like, really, like, tough as nails NES games. And, like, NES-like games. Um, but... And while, yes, Shovel Knight did market itself as, you know... A... Uh, an homage to, like... The classic NES games that, like most of us gamers grew up with. Like... <laughs> what many people don't get is that, like, challenge like that only existed because of the limitations of the time. Like... We can make games that are long now and, like, worth the price that you have to pay for them. You couldn't do that back in the day, because, like, there was only so much space. And, yeah, vertical scrolling. A pain in the ass. And then we have to run across this. There we go. Alright, I think we reached the boss room, so... Let's, uh, let's just finish this. Ah! How did you ma Did you make all that noise? I can't think straight! I have so much work to do! Just work on- just work on letting me pass, little friend. Oh, big words, Tin Man. I'll show you a thing or two. Thinker Knight! It's pathetic. But what makes him unique, other than literally being the world's most pathetic boss in a game like this, like his stage was harder than him, is, well, this. Yes, he has a second form. Complete with mech. And, yeah, his drill is made out of the same material as the rotating platforms that we, uh, jumped on earlier. And he can shoot uh, missiles that you can climb up on and those bouncing bombs that you can uh, shovel drop onto essentially. But there we go! With that, the Order of No Quarter has been bested. And it is time... ...for yet another dream about sh uh, Shield Knight. And now, of course, in come all the enemies from the three levels we just did. Again, your Chaos Sphere it is probably the best way to clear out these guys. But unfortunately, it is still but a dream. And there it is, our final meal ticket.
And that unlocks the path to the Tower of Fate and Area 4, the final area of the game. So, we're going to turn in some music sheets. A meal ticket. I'm just reacting very slowly. And let's just fly over here. And as always, before we begin our assault on the Tower of Fate. We have some stuff to deal with on the map here for Area 3. So next time, we'll tackle the final Wandering Warrior and Frigid Flight. See you then! Bye bye!